tickets from multiple sellers, Next Drew is taking Tom 150 miles north to the heart of Cheshire to learn how to buy from a solo dealer. En route, Drew's making sure Tom's done his homework. Who's the godfather of Gothic? Huge in with Godfather go. Gothic. A.W. or E.W.? A.W. Good lad. You'd have my head off if I got that wrong. Yeah, I know. So today, we are off to see a guy called James Broad. Yep. And uh, young dealer and his girlfriend, Emma. OK. And um, they've got a warehouse over in Cheshire. And they've called us up to say, come and have a look. They're heading to the small town of Congleton on the River Dane. Historically, the town was known for its leatherworking and lace making. And by the end of the 19th century, there were numerous textile mills in town, which spurred the construction of the Macclesfield Canal, followed by the railway line in 1848. Today, there's a new antiques business here, James Broad Interiors, which he runs together with his partner, Emma Porcy. Because it's both me and my partner that do it, we have quite eclectic taste because we both have really different ideas of what we like. I prefer sort of mid-century style stuff, whereas James um, is more into his proper, proper antiques, as I think you'd call them. There's not really one thing that we tend to specialise in, apart from chairs. We both really love chairs. OK. It's always nice to meet new dealers, and especially dealers that are so passionate about getting other people interested in antiques and hopefully I'm not going to have my wedding called off if I sell anything too cheap. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hello. Hi, I'm Hi. Emma. Hi, yeah. Are you all right? Nice to meet you. So my I'm son really... Tom's with Hello. me today. Nice to Hi. meet you. No, T's on holiday. OK, So he's cool. coming to help me out. So this is your <laughs> showroom, yeah? Yes, yeah. This is where all of our stuff is. All sorts of exciting things. Lots okay. of chairs. Lots of chairs. Lots of chairs. Lots of chairs. That's just like ours, honestly. <laughs> chair central. So who, who's the chair maniac? James. James absolutely loves chairs. Um, I think he loves chairs more than he loves me. <laughs> but <laughs> I've kind of come to do it come to I think the same now. thing sometimes, honestly. <laughs> honestly, we're in the same boat. Don't worry, don't take it personally. I'm only just starting to realise that I'm now become an old fart in the antiques business. I still think I'm quite young, but clearly not. Not when you're meeting people half your age and they're doing it and they're having a real go. So why antiques then? Um, I'll be honest, I never really was interested in antiques at all. Yeah. Um, but my partner, whose business this is, yeah. he kind of got me into it and got me interested. I think it's, it's a great alternative business to go into. Yeah, it's cool. It, and I've it obviously well. followed him this whole I bet time. You've learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Getting I mean, there. Sometimes you're flooded with information. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you, you think you know more can. than me now. <laughs> Seriously, the way you think. So. Anyway, come, come and have a look. Yes. Can you? So. Coronation chairs and stools, and this one's in it's still a limed finish. Mm -hmm. Yep. Should all be marked. We up. bought that as is, whereas the chair we've had a little bit of work done to it. Yeah. But nothing on that one. That's correct. So this one, they've the the, the colour yeah. is incorrect. Yeah. It's had some nasty repairs. Yeah. Very nasty repairs on there. But that's and ooh, and underneath. Yeah, we've had to replace the. You're better off not. Right, OK. You're better off just leaving that. Just don't have it. Without it? Just don't have it. OK. What's incorrect about the colour on this? It's too dark. It's been stained across the top of the oak. Because I know we've had one of these oh. stools before. I we've, remember got, we've got three or four in the warehouse now. Said these added. Yes. Later date. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Well done. <laughs> well. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> Original upholstery? Yeah. Colour correct? I'd assume so. Yeah, it is. Just, faded, with, just with a bit of wear, a lot bit of, of fading. A lot of fading. Yeah, so that one's... Well, price on that, please. I think it's, it's on as a set for about 9.50. Oof, right, OK. Um, but you'd probably get the store for about 300. These chairs are not a common item, but something that regularly turns up, which are coronation chairs. The stool is absolutely dead on. It's got the original upholstery, original trim. Uh, it's got the correct stamps underneath. It's got the metalwork underneath where they were joined together. That's all correct as well. It's got the correct limed oak finish to it. It's really in nice condition. This stool with dark green velvet upholstery and gold braiding was commissioned from William Hands of High Wycombe. It's made of limed oak, created by applying a caustic liming wax to the timber. The stool was made for George VI's coronation on the 12th of May, 1937. 8,000 guests came to Westminster Abbey to witness it, and each dignitary would have had a chair or stool made for them. Her late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest reigning monarch, was an 11-year-old princess at her father's coronation and was confirmed as heir presumptive. With its regal provenance, 
this coronation stool could be worth up to £550. These were used on the day of the coronation. That's what they were for. And like most coronation chairs, you were given the option to buy the chair afterwards. And these things become quite valuable if you do the right thing with them. Stool. He would split them. How much He's for the stool alone? He's happy to split them. So for the stool, I think it'd be about 310. Can we just round it off at 300 quid? It just sounds odd at 310. Yes. Just yeah. easier for my math. Nice. So the chair, non-starter. The stool, I do want to buy, so we do it at 300 in the end. Fine. I've got some more of those, and we'll keep collecting them. Um, the little elephant table, do you want to pull that? Do you yes. check? There you go. Do your due diligence on that table there, Tom. OK. It's had a couple of the, of the bolts mis uh, replaced from the bottom. Yep. But the, all the ones connecting the elephant, the trunks to the top, seem to be original. OK. Any breaks or damage to the legs? I haven't had a look at that yet. <sighs> Top's OK. Does it sit all right? Well, Seems all to be good things. to me. Is it saleable? I mean, yeah, we always we have these in. So how much is that one? Um, okay. 550. 550 pounds, yeah. right. We're a long way apart on that yeah. one, okay. unfortunately. That's what? too much. I'd have to cut him in half on that one. And I know he won't take it, and that's fine. But that is where we're at with that one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he would. No. Teach, it's great, this. I get to go shopping and teach him something as oh. well. And because you're here, he's been quiet and not been rude to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best. He's trying his best, <laughs> yeah. Best. Tom's been working in and around the business really his whole life. The only way of doing this job and the only way of, of, of knowing is to be around it constantly. Anything yeah. else catching your eye? I think that brass... Is it brass? Or, I'm guessing it's brass bronze uh, lamp over here. Yeah. With the turned... Is it of the right quality? It's a real, it's a real mismatch of lights in here. It's quite hard yeah, to get out. It's, yeah, Don't weird. knock anything over or you've bought it. <laughs> Got nice feet on it. Is it right? Seems to me to be. So it's a converted candlestick, mm -hmm. altar candlestick. Yeah. With Tom, I mean, I'm not a teacher, right? I was a, I was a terrible student, and I'm probably a terrible teacher. But I can only talk to him about what I know. I can't give him any more than what I know. So I'm just saying, what do you think of this? Just to get him to look at things. And all I'm, I'm trying to do, whenever somebody says, "How do I learn?" Look at it. I mean, don't just go. That's great. I mean, look at it. So the weight will tell you something straight away that it's right. Yeah. You can see that the wear is correct. It's not bad. I'm not completely convinced by the uh, bulb holder in it. Thanks. That'll have to change. You wouldn't have to leave that on. And what it really comes down to is price. I think it's 220. 220. 220. So it's not miles away. Cool. Is there a profit left in that? Definitely. You think so? Yes. There's 40 quid to spend on it. That's fine. Okay. Okay. See how he just spent 40 quid a month. Like that. <laughs> That's what a, kids do. I've spent more by the end of the day, honestly. <laughs> Much more. That's what we do. It's <laughs> the point of having parents. Yeah. Next thing we see is a, a large gilt brass candlestick. It's been converted to electric light not very well. I can rectify that quite cheaply, you know, and get it rewired and, and redone and, and make it look a little bit better. But it, it just, it's not quite there. OK, um, can we go through to have yeah, a look in the other room? So, we've got all this little bit of artwork down here. Interesting door. Where did you get these from? Um, I don't actually know where he bought them from. What are they made from? Metal? They're um, tin. That one's, that one's not, but this one's, I think, tin. Could be a coach panel. It's been just covered in. I don't even know. <laughs> but I like the texture. I like the way it feels. I like the texture. We've got to be make sure it's not a fake. Yeah. Can I take it through to yeah, the light? Yeah, of course we can. Yes. Have a look. Because it almost... It's that good, it's too good. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Now, the, the British coat of arms is a thing of beauty and highly desirable in all forms, whether it's cast iron, bronze, brass, carved wood, stamp, painted, you name it, everybody wants a coat of arms. This one, I feel, is wrong and it just doesn't smell right. The back of the timber, the way it's cut, is incorrect for the period. But there's too many things indicating to me that it ain't quite right. Nope, it's not right. Damn. It's a fake, unfortunately. What, what makes you know that that's a fake? Everything. OK. Yeah, it's, it, 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 <laughs> right. it's just all wrong. It's, number one was the type of timber it's cut onto okay. there on the back panel. Number two is, this is faux. That's been done. Right. See how it's in lines and it's perfect. Yeah. And then if you look underneath here, that isn't actually painted on. That's been that's been put on with a, like a like a print. Okay. Underneath there, where an original coaching panel with a coat of arms like that would be a nice 
would be a valuable and right. desirable thing. Painted on tin, at first glance, this panel looked like it was from the door of a 19th century horse-drawn coach. If it was original, it would have been worth two to three thousand pounds. But on closer inspection, it's a well-executed replica from the 20th century. Sold as a decorative piece, it could still be worth up to 200 pounds. It still would be something that I might be interested in, depending on the price. I think it'd be about 150 or 140. Drew has taken his son, Tom, on a trip to Cheshire to learn more about the trade. I bet you've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes you're flooded with information. <laughs> Too but, much. Yeah, you know. He, he thinks, he, he thinks he knows more than me now. <laughs> he spotted what he's convinced is a replica of a coaching panel from a horse-drawn carriage. An original coaching panel with a coat of arms like that would be a nice, would be a valuable and right. desirable thing. OK. But it still would be something that I might be interested in, depending on the price. I think it'd be about 150 or 140. Yeah, I'm just looking at this, it's just driving me crazy now. It's like as if they've got half an original idea and then sort of gone over it, and bits of it are too good not to be. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the amount of goo they've chucked over the top of it is a little bit unrealistic. And this protects it from weathering? Yes, right. but they're usually, as well, on a tin. So you think, well, it, it could have been a door because it's got elements mm -hmm. down there, but the way the timber is cut as well is incorrect. I'm looking at this thing and thinking, what a fantastic looking piece just as a decorative item. But is it right? No. But there's so many things about it that look right, so it's really quite good. Really it's got sorry. enough going for it just as a decorative piece. Yeah. I'm just being, I'm just being too... Cautious. I'm being too cautious, too picky. OK. I'll have it. Yeah? Yeah. 140? 140. Brilliant. Thank you. I recently bought something very similar which had the same feeling to it, a real good thing, but it was faux. And it took me ages to work out what it was, and it was from a film set. And I've got a feeling that's what this is from. But it's a fabulous piece of wall art. As a decorative item, it's fine to buy it, but don't be under any illusion that it is what it is, because it isn't. Right, so... Yeah? That panel, the, ch the coat of arms. Yeah. So what do we get it for? 140 pay? Yeah. So you can double that, I'd say, almost. 280, no. 280, 250? No. no, less. Less, you need to be... Bought for 140, you need to be able to let that go at 180. You do, Tom. You know, if you can get 200, great. Yeah. If somebody offers you 180, you take it.
before in the warehouse now. Said these added. Yes. Later date. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Well done. <laughs> well, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Original upholstery. Yeah. Colour correct. I'd assume so. Yeah. It is. Just, faded, with, just with a bit of wear. A lot bit of, of fading. A lot of fading. Yeah. So that one's. Well, price on that, please. I think it's, it's on as a set for about nine fifty. Oof. Right. Okay. Um, but you'd probably get the store for about three hundred. These chairs are not a common item, but something that regularly turns up, which are coronation chairs. The stool is absolutely dead on. It's got the original upholstery, original trim. Uh, it's got the correct stamps underneath. It's got the metalwork underneath where they were joined together. That's all correct as well. It's got the correct limed oak finish to it. It's really in nice condition. This stool with dark green velvet upholstery and gold braiding was commissioned from William Hands of High Wycombe. It's made of limed oak, created by applying a caustic liming wax to the timber. The stool was made for George VI's coronation on the 12th of May, 1937. 8,000 guests came to Westminster Abbey to witness it, and each dignitary would have had a chair or stool made for them. Her late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest reigning monarch, was an 11-year-old princess at her father's coronation and was confirmed as heir presumptive. With its regal provenance, this coronation stool could be worth up to £550. These were used on the day of the coronation. That's what they were for. And like most coronation chairs, you were given the option to buy the chair afterwards. And these things become quite valuable if you do the right thing with them. Stool. He would split them. How much He's happy to split them. So for the stool, I think it'd be about 310. Can we just round it off at 300 quid? It just sounds odd at 310. Yes. It's yep. easier for my maths. Nice. So the chair, non-starter. The stool, I do want to buy, so we do it at 300 in the end. Fine. I've got some more of those, and we'll keep collecting them. Um, the little elephant table, do you want to pull that? Do you yes. Check? There you go. Do your due diligence <laughs> on that table there, Tom. OK. It's had a couple of the, of the bolts 